everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another Falconry video. In today's video I want to discuss and talk about the topic of what mistake we make when training imprint birds. You get a baby bird, an IS, the proper term, and there's kind of a, a, a part of the training that a lot of people just never talk about and maybe even skip altogether. I think it's very important. It's addressed, it's known about, but I just don't hear people talking, remember to do this. Um, you don't hear it as part of the training. Uh, but before I jump in, if you haven't already, if you could hit subscribe to my channel, I genuinely appreciate it. Helps me keep this uh, whole thing up and going. Try to get videos out every week in addition to the Falconry podcast, and your support is so appreciated. Thank you so much. Uh, now, when it comes to birds of prey, uh, you know, a baby bird is an IS, right? And uh, if you take a baby, now, it could be either way. It could be captive bred, or it could be a bird that you got from the wild. In some regions, that's allowed, like in my region. And that little tiny ball of fluff... That little tiny bird, and you might get at different ages. I'm not talking about all the different ages here. That's not the point of this video. That bird uh, is reliant on you just completely to raise it, to train it, and to get it going. And typically that will result in imprinting of some kind. Imprinting is where a bird thinks that it is a human or that you're a bird or whatever, which uh, can have a lot of good things and a lot of bad things. It can lead to vocalization and potentially to aggression if it's done wrong. And it can lead to a lot of kindness as well. And I'll get to that in a minute. But uh, one of the things I love about of, uh, acquiring a young bird like this, a young Ias, is the fact that it's a sure thing. If you know where a nest is or if you know a breeder and you buy one from a breeder, there's no guesswork. It's not like, well, in the fall, I, I hope the migrations are good and then there's a bird that I can... I can that I'm looking for that I'll find it's like nope I called the breeder up and reserved a first you know a baby peregrine falcon or something like that that it's nice it's really nice but you everybody who's watched my channel knows that I don't just care about training techniques I want to know the principle behind them <coughs> so the principle I want to uh, address first is the bubble that okay? the, the bubble principle what that refers to is um well, let me say what's outside of the bubble. All animals and humans left to their own devices, especially like in tribal times, there is uh, this, this fight or flight. There is this sense of like a me against everyone else. And maybe if you're a social species, it's like my pack, my troop, whatever, my herd against everybody else. And there's this distrust of everyone and everything. Everyone and everything out there might kill you. Everyone and everything out there might steal you your food or stab you in the back. And that is a good survival mentality to have. Uh, I mean, if you want to talk psychology and humans, that will be a safe person. You think just as a human living life, you talk about friendships, uh, em fellow employees and coworkers and relationships. If you lock your heart away, you're safe. It's way safer to just be like, I don't trust anyone. Same thing in the animal kingdom. If it's like anything might try to kill me, I'm just going to either attack it or run away from it. Uh, when it comes to if you want to live a richer life, of course, psychologically as a human, you've got to open up your heart and be willing to take that risk. And it's the same thing with the animal kingdom. Now, uh, when you train, let's say you catch a passage bird, which is a first year bird that is full size, but does not yet have its adult coloration and, uh, and, and doesn't have a mate, in theory. That bird uh, is at first going to have like some issues with you, like, oh, I don't trust you. And then there's certain ways, usually centered around food, that we uh, elicit uh, social bonding until the bird trusts you and kind of lets down those barriers. And, it's, and it, it works. I've seen this outside of the bubble. I have watched that transition with so many species, not just birds. I've worked with wildlife my whole life in all kinds of capacities from wildlife rehabilitation to training to even with domestic species. You have a wild llama freaking out and then, it, you know, and you help build that trust. It's like, okay. And once that happens, then they are into this bubble of safety. Um, one of the strangest examples that I, I thought was always funny, I remember one time in my yard, I had, uh, I had a friend over who had his two hawks, and I had a couple hawks, a falcon, an owl, and a golden eagle, all weathering. They were all on perches. We were out there just talking, having a barbecue, and, and the eagle jumped off the perch to the end of the leash. And all the birds around were like, rah, 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 rah. we're like gonna mob her. It's like, she could kill any of you easily on the ground, but they understood, oh, I'm, I'm on a leash, so is she. There's nothing she can do about it. 
Um, and even though birds do mob eagles in the wild, on the ground, they're not just going to run up to. You're not going to have a golden eagle on the ground and a harris hawk on the ground and the harris hawk runs up and is harassing that golden eagle when it's not going to happen. But they knew, hey, I'm in the safety bubble, so to speak. And I know that's kind of an out there example, but it is an example that I wanted to share. Animals learn and they know, oh, I'm, I'm safe around you. You can approach me. Uh, I've talked in my previous videos about the spiral and stomp video uh, where how do you approach a bird on the ground that's on a kill or on the lure and the technique that I use to the spiral and stomp technique to get them to overcome that natural fear to, oh no, something's approaching me and towering over me. I should fly away. It works. And we're used to that with passage birds. We're used to that with animals that come in that are, you know, even, even a dog, a dog that's lived a rough life and you build trust and companionship. Imprints are entirely different. Imprints hatch into the bubble. That's all they have ever known. Now there's things I absolutely love about that. I love the depth of a relationship you can get that usually far exceeds what you can ever get with a passage bird. The trust is there. And so they can let their guard down and be infinitely more playful with you and with even toys, things like that. They, they, their creative side comes out. Now, maybe some old timers in Falconer be like, what are you talking about? It's very well documented and people have shown just how intelligent raptors can be. Not maybe to the level of a parrot has been displayed yet, but definitely far more intelligent, far more creative and far more playful than we give them credit. And let's take a look, let's compare the difference. We have documented wolves and coyotes in the wild, occasionally being playful. And it might be fight play, but it's a little playful. Dogs are born into the bubble. And they look how much, and remember dogs are, they, they are wolves, they came from wolves. We selectively bred a few thousand years ago, dogs from wolves, so they are wolves. Uh, they can still breed with wolves. Uh, they're. You know, really, when you think about it, wolves still. And yet, how much more playful when you have multiple generations of these dogs being born in the bubble. They're just like, hey, we're all just friends. And they still have some instinct. Oh, I got to bark at things and chase a car. But they're nowhere near as on guard as a wolf is. That is how an imprint raptor is. You got an imprint falcon you're training. They're just like, hey, what's going on? They're not thinking, ah, I got to, my siblings are going to try to steal my food for me. Oh, an eagle might see me in my nest. I got to watch out and freak out and scream if something does so that my parents come and, you know, can protect me. You don't have that kind of stuff. And that can be great. I love it. I do love properly raising an imprint. And again, I'm not, a, I don't want to address the points of potential aggression or the points of, you know, vocalization. I've done that in other videos and I will do that in other videos. This is just saying, what do we miss? What are we screwing up? We just enjoy this bubble almost as if this imprint falcon or hawk you're training is like a dog. You're like, this is fun, taking them everywhere. Oh, it's just, it's loving the world, it's social, it's friendly, do, 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 do. But we forget a very important principle, and that is that outside of the bubble exists all of these vital lessons that they're missing. Now, we do know that in falconry, and because of that, we'll have things like people will uh, do what's called hacking a bird, which is where you kind of let them be in a fake nest out there where they get food and then you open it up as time goes on because it's enclosed and you let them start to learn to fly, spread their wings, learn to land, learn to die, maybe even hunt. And they come back every night. And at some point you retrap them. And so it's kind of like a cross between, uh, a, you know, a, a, a safe bet captive bred bird, but you've got these wild skills. There's also tame hacks where you might set your bird free and do that for part of a day and just let them roam the neighborhood or roam a specific forest and you've got radio telemetry, you track them back down, call them down. I have done a lot of tame hacking. Uh, I've done a lot with peregrines and with cooper's hawks and goshawks in certain settings. Uh, I'm not a master of it, but I love the principle. It really teaches them lessons. But here is the important thing. There are things your bird is totally missing out on. It, learning how to land properly, learning how to chase properly, learning how to actually do fast, direct pursuit. We think that our birds know what falconry is. They don't. We also wrongly think with an imprint that all there is is falconry. There is not. There's so many aerial maneuvers and life lessons that a bird needs to understand. And they don't get that in the bubble unless you artificially make it for them. Uh, that's that's just how it works. And so your job, if you're raising an imprint of any kind, if you're raising a baby bird 
is to help prepare it for those kind of things. You have to, whether you're gonna like, I'm gonna hack my bird or tame hack my bird, fine. That's a great way to accomplish some of those things, but there's artificial ways you can do it. And I'm not gonna come up with all the suggestions because that would just be an overly long video where this video is already too long as it is. But I want to just make you aware of the principle Yes, you got to train. You got an imprint, sure. You've got to train them to fly to the fist. You got to train them to eat off the fist. You got to train them to fly to a lure. You got to train them to recognize prey, pursue prey, and successfully uh, chase and, and tackle prey. Great. That's falconry. We know that. But just be aware of the principle that you have so much more you really need to do. Again, helping the bird learn maneuvers that they wouldn't otherwise do in the bubble. Uh, they learn them how to evade predators, learn them how to have, you know, to, to mantle over your food. So all these kind of things that you would learn in the nest and then as you get out into the real world. Find, think of what all the steps a wild raptor would go through from a fluff ball to flying out on its own with the parents gone. With the parents gone. Think about all those things. Maybe write a little checklist of what these things are and say, okay, I want this super friendly bird in the bubble, but how do I artificially provide opportunities to help teach my bird these items on the checklist that they don't learn in the bubble. Think it through, come up with creative ideas. It is a great thing to do. Uh, and if you do it right, you can have the best of both worlds. You can have a guaranteed bird that you got from a breeder or got from a nest that's friendly, non-vocal, non-aggressive, and is a joy to be around, almost like a puppy, but also is this powerful athletic hunting machine that can evade a larger predator going after it, that, can, that, that, that knows how to chase, that knows how to land without kind of uh, crashing like an idiot. Uh, all of these things, you gotta still teach that bird. So remember that principle, come up with your own ways, share ways, and please, in this video, I would love it if you would share, if you've already done this, some of the ways you have found, some of the artificial ways to help a bird learn certain things as an imprint uh, that we can all benefit from if you share. So I hope you enjoyed this video, these principles. Uh, again, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe, and as always, happy hawking.